Thank you for joining us today for Learning Lean Six Sigma Skills Online in the Digital Age. I would like to welcome you and thank you for taking the time to join us today. I will first address some logistical issues for the session and then introduce our speaker, Rick Haynes. A lot of material is planned for this one hour webinar, so the audio will be muted for the remainder of the presentation to ensure that we are able to get through the entire presentation in the time allowed. We will not be able to hear you, but you will be able to hear Rick and submit text questions through the system during the presentation. We value your questions. And if Rick cannot answer your questions either during the presentation or at the end of the webinar, we will either email you or give you a call with a response. So please go ahead and submit any questions you have throughout. There will be a recording of the webinar available on smartersolutions.com within 24 hours and you will also receive an email with a link to this recording. Please know that as a participant in the webinar, someone with Smarter Solutions might give you a call. If you don't want us to contact you following the webinar, please let us know that in the feedback survey that we've got at the end. And now I will introduce our presenter, Rick Haynes. Rick has over 20 years of Lean and Six Sigma experience as a practitioner, and he's one of Smarter Solutions' senior instructors. Through his career, he is certified as a Master Black Belt, a Black Belt, a Champion, and a Yellow Belt, along with teaching and certifying professionals in all the Lean Six Sigma areas. His personal Lean Six Sigma work has spanned nearly all business types, including manufacturing, transactional, research and development, He's worked in all levels of the business, from entry level up to a site engineering manager, and his life experiences and skills will provide you with an engaging discussion today. Again, thanks for joining, and at this time, Rick, I will turn the presentation over to you. Thank you, Elon. Uh, interesting topic here for me, the e-learning or learning online. We're going to talk a little bit of how it changes and what goes along with it. And uh, as I get started, the owner just walked in. I just wanted to introduce him. It's Forrest Breifogel. Do you want to say something? Yes, well, I um, hope you're going to get a lot of good takeaways from this session. Uh, Rick put some good time into it and see how we can do things smarter, right? There you go. We're a smarter solution. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't even scripted. Forrest just yeah. walked in. I just wanted to say hi. Thank you, Forrest. Okay, thanks. Um, we're going to go into what the digital age means, and I bet it's a little you guys all understand it or you wouldn't be on a webinar. I think that's part of it. We'll look at the different options out there. And of course, part of this is trying to sell you on why we're a great provider, but we'll talk about the different aspects. Elon also said at the beginning about entering questions. Uh, I am an instructor. I can take questions in the middle of this, answer them. Elon will interrupt me if they're right to the slide we're on. If not, we'll cover them at the end. But please type them in. Don't feel shy. Uh, write them in. What's interesting to me too, and it's something you may not see as signing up for this, but this is a, as of about 9 o'clock in our morning about four hours ago, the different countries that have participants in this webinar. It's pretty interesting for a company in Austin, Texas getting this, and I, I thought it's interesting. I know, I know a couple of them, but it shows some of the reasons that e-learning is popular. Uh, it's really nice if you have a provider in your hometown that's quite good. You don't have to, you can get up at the normal time, go to class, get home. But a lot of training in Lean and Six Sigma involves getting on an airplane and spending a week somewhere over and over again, which means time from work, time from your family, a general disruption of your life. And as you look at this span, some of these people, that's a heck of a long flight if they were to come over here for a class. So e-learning gives you an awful lot of advantages. I think that's why it's becoming more popular. So here's my slide on why it's gaining more popularity. I think over time people are more familiar or more comfortable with computers. I even remember my mom, she's passed, but in her 70s she would start to get into doing videos and email and start to get used to it. <clears throat> Children these days in almost every country are getting exposure to computers. It's becoming natural. Much of our news is being pushed out that way. 
We also find, at least in the United States here, that our instructors are actually, not I mean our instructors, our clients, the biggest decisions on going to e-learning is really they can't accept the person being away from work. The recession has hit many parts of the world and here, and a lot of staff's been reduced just to cut costs. There isn't allowance for people to leave for things other than medical and vacation. But we find the biggest reason for it isn't the cost of the class, which is actually equivalent or a little bit less than an, a classroom session. It's just they don't want to be from work. There is travel cost to add in there if you have to fly to a classroom session. Then you have hotels, maybe cars, plus all the food. It can get expensive, but generally it's the time away from work that costs the company most. The other popular thing about e-learning is it's somewhat you can control your own schedule. You take you go to a lesson when you have a little bit of time, it fits around your schedule, it's nice. But the other piece of that is you also don't have to wait for four to five or ten other people to sign up before you take the class. Good e-learning, you just start it when you're ready, you finish it when you're ready. It's pretty neat. But let's get to the real, I guess, the question people ask us about e-learning. Is, is it for me? Or the a corollary to that is, will I learn what I need from an e-learning course? Classroom training has been established for years. It's the, I guess it's the most common one out there. People see that it works for the most part. E-learning is relatively new with the advent of the internet and computers. Now, when we look at what the digital age means, mobile devices, phones that talk to your watch, cars that talk to your phones, everybody having internet, free Wi-Fi in many places, telephones now that are having data plans that can really connect you with anything. And just think, here you are, all over the world, listening to a webinar, you might watch it recorded. It's really the connection of everything that seems to be the start of the digital age. We see smartphones and tablets, Google, I don't know, Elon, what was it, about six months ago added the thing they want every website now to be configurable for mobile devices, right? That's right. Was it about six months ago? Uh, it was. Yeah, because they've been tasking for a year. They finally started reducing your ranking on searches if you were not mobile compliant or friendly, maybe. Because it's about April. And guess what? We had to run around and get all our stuff ready for phones and tablets. <laughs> like everybody, I assume. But again, they're recognizing the majority of the consumption of the internet's coming on portable devices. The next one, e-books versus paper books. Paper books have been around since the Gutenberg Bible a long time ago. I still have boxes of them, but I find myself reading a higher proportion of books on my mobile device than I do picking up a paperback book. I was actually on vacation uh, a couple weeks ago I'm reading a book on my phone, and the shelf of where I'm staying has got the paperback book. I picked up the paperback thinking how pleasant that used to be, and I put it down and went back to my phone to read it. <laughs> That's what the digital age is doing to us, and I think the last one I read often about is communication. We used to call people. We used to write people when I was a kid. Then we started calling people. Then it was texting people. And now a lot of the communication that's done between individuals with Facebook, Twitter, and other I'll call them asynchronous. You're not really talking. There, There's a time lag between you send and they read. But more and more people are now are communicating and learning from web devices and the Internet and such. That's really what the digital aid is getting to. If you look at companies, now I don't know about the world. I can find information on U.S. companies. Three-quarters of the U.S. companies use a learning management system with e-learning some type, webcasting, virtual classrooms, video broadcasting or HTML training, three quarters. But in 95, which, which is probably 20, see if I do that, I should do math better. 20 years ago, it was only 4%. If you think about what's happened, that's in the business lifetime of most of us, not even well past our lifetime. And they also listed of those 74%, about half actually use what are called rapid e-learning tools, which I think is found to be the simplest way to create an e-learning class is really you get a voice over PowerPoint. You got some level of animation, but it really is just uh, it's a lot more passive. You listen and watch as the training goes by. 
But you know what? Whether you like it or not, this is coming. More and more things are coming this way. So here comes to our first question. And we have these questions here to, to get some interaction with you folks on the line, but also to help you see what other people think about. This is really about your general experience with e-learning right now for you. And it goes from, I've done it a lot and I like it, the first one, to the bottom one says, I've used it and I don't like it. It doesn't work for me. And I'm guessing if you're on this webinar, there's not many doesn't not work well here. But I like to pick the one that works. The middle one is one that I'm just sort of neutral through it and don't have a lot of experience. I appreciate you guys, Glenn, I'm, as I watch it, the people who like it are winning the race right now. Uh, you will get posted the full response in a minute. Let's give it another few seconds, Elon, and we'll close the poll and shut up. Thank you for participating in it. Let's see how we go. It should pop up on your screen now, and you'd see the top two, I use it and it works well for me, and I use it some and it works well for me, are majority of the folks. That's great. Right. Nobody said it doesn't work, but I guess I think because we have a webinar on e-learning, that probably excluded them. <laughs> um, I guess another nice thing with the number of people that are outside of the United States, and by the way, we are in Austin, Texas, South Central United States, uh, of course, English speaking here. You can take a class in another language that you know somewhat well if it's an e-learning because you can stop it, rewind it, look stuff up. If you're in a classroom session and the teacher is in your second language, it can be difficult when the vocabulary moves fast, it doesn't go back, which is another advantage, I think, that you can get e-learning from countries around the world that may not be your first language. So it's a good thing. Let's close that and move on with the talk. The next section is about different aspects of e-learning. You may think that e-learning is e-learning, but there are as many versions as there are people doing it. These are the four main ones that we see. The interactive HTML, which is an active web page format. It's got links to things. It's got videos that can have an animation like any web page does. But it mixes somewhat reading, watching, and some of them have listening also. There's a next most popular, which probably for Lean Six Sigma, the, uh, the biggest provider of e-learning in the United States, does what's called distance learning. You actually view the classroom or an instructor teaching the lesson remotely. So they're presenting to a camera or maybe sometimes a classroom, but you really view an online lecture. Those can be a different style. Uh, you get the voice, you get their drawing on the board or their screenshots, and you can see some interaction of the instructor there. The next one, which is they talked about the rapid e-learning tools, which there are a number of them that convert a PowerPoint into a lesson, but generally it's a PowerPoint with some little animation and someone talking to you. Easiest to do. And the last one, there is still e-learning with study and that really doesn't have an instructor. Self-study testing, we see a number of those in the Lean Six Sigma world. Uh, places like the Indiana Quality Council provide study guides and books for testing. It's another way, not, it's not really online, but it really is for somebody who can't go to the classroom session, so I added it. And actually, I've used that word a lot today, but today in our office we had a gentleman come in and talk about e-learning provided uh, with a voiceover PowerPoint that mixed exams in uh, and emailing to the instructor. So these really are common, all four of these. First one, which would you prefer? I know what I would pick. I like interaction. I actually get bored just watching things. So that would be our, our preference, and that's also what we provide here at Smarter Solutions. Support. Some of the reasons people choose classroom training over online, or we'll call it remote training, is the interaction of a person. The best part of classroom training is looking someone in the eye and saying, I don't understand, can you try again? Hearing multiple things, getting the body language, and talking it through with other students. Most e-learning doesn't provide that very well. So the question is, what would you prefer for support? None phone and email, having an assigned coach is what we believe in having an assigned coach, you actually talk with them, or just email. Because a number of the e-learning 
the better ones have chat rooms for students to interact with each other. You post questions, people answer. So you end up with a, a lot of them look like a Facebook page that you have scroll down questions and answers down to what we think talking to a person. Smarter Solutions likes the last one that you can call in. I mean, I have done coaching sessions at my midnight for people on the other side of the world that need to have a question. Most of it's done with email, but it's nice that you have a single person to talk to assigned to every student. This is another one we concern. I think this was one of my big deals with online training. It's when the class ended, you got nothing, generally. So about retaining materials. If you finished a class, what would you like to have in your hands or on your desk at the end of the class? And you can see a bunch of choices. Many of them, it's nothing. Some will allow you to print out portions of it that you can do it yourself. So you end up with a bunch of printed pages from the internet. Sometimes they have books. A number of them have a reference book, but they're generally not tied to the class. It's, if you want to go look up a t-test, you, you can look up the index and find it taught slightly different than the lesson. Down to the last two, which we like, printed reference books. I mean, I still like books, even though I had the thing about e-books earlier. But they have a printed textbook that's indexed with a table of contents to help you learn. Because then you get the audio learning, the visual learning, but you also get a chance to read it in a textbook style. And the last one, which really fits the digital age, is electronic versions of textbooks that are indexed. You can search them. Some level it's even better because you can actually search the book for topics. We are in the middle of doing that with all of our textbooks. There'll be a slide later coming up. I think it probably is the next slide. But which of those would you prefer? Now, we would pick the bottom two. As much because we're all sort of tech people and we like reference material because I don't have the memory to remember a whole class, but I do remember sometimes that I was taught something and I can go look it up. These are the books we usually teach out of, written by the owner who you heard speak a few minutes ago. Most of our Lean Six Sigma is taught out of the volume three book on the far right side. It is, what would you say, along three inches thick? It's pretty thick, 1,100 pages. Yeah, it's, it's a big book. But now with people signing up for online courses, we are going to be allowing them to have an electronic copy of the book and a Kindle version. Even if you don't have a Kindle, you can still read it on your PC but it'll allow you to not have to have the book. We've been working on that. The whole series should be done sometime this year and put out. You can find most of our training books on Amazon now. I think we're done. Two are missing, but they're in final review. We also provide a lot of other material. Uh, Forrest Breifogel's put together a class that has got a lot of reference material. This colorful thing on the lower left is really a to be 96 inches or about three meters long, a roadmap of the entire DMAIC Lean Six Sigma process. It involves all the lean processes, the Six Sigma processes, and a couple more like the theory of constraints into one big system for solving problems. But we offer you a PDF of that that you can have for yourself and some other things. Uh, we give an awful lot of material. I'm trying to think. Uh, Black Belt gets five books and the PDFs that go along with it. Still pretty good. So we'll leave the retained material and the talk about provider. Big thing has changed if when Alon said I've been doing this 20 years, I'm thinking in my mind it's been 24 years. I was certified a black belt in 1991. I've watched Lean and Six Sigma join together and change as time went on and business needs changed. It started out, all there was was companies. Then came consultants like Smarter Solutions to provide training. But probably in the last number of years, universities have started providing Lean Six Sigma training, along with consulting firms that have done other things. I think there's one here in town that's a HR consultant that also does Greenbelt training. So what would you prefer if you're picking a provider for Lean Six Sigma? Would you like a company with a great looking website? one that's been established with a long history, or even a local university. And I think local is still an important one. But what do you think is best? Now, you may know who we are, but we would prefer you like established Lean Six Sigma providers. I think Smarter Solutions has been around 23 years. I might be off plus or minus one on that. 
It's been around a long time. The training materials matured for 20 plus years. It's pretty darn good. Even our e-learning, oh, I didn't even say that, but our e-learning matches the exact knowledge and training content of our classroom sessions. So when the question is, are you going to get what you want, you will get everything. Last one I think we'll talk about is certification. <clears throat> when Lean Six Sigma started back in the 90s, I guess it was the late 80s, there was no such thing as certification. You met the requirements for training and you were a black belt. With uh, General Electric became certification projects. Uh, you had to be trained. You had to complete a project or two. It got more strict. Over the last 10 years, it's becoming less strict. So the question, if you were to pick an online training program, what would you want with the aspect of certification? Because all of these four are available. You just, there's no certification, you take the test, you take the class, you know it, you would then go off and find another way to certify. Many people use some of the certification mills to take an exam and get a certification. Some of them call it certified just when you complete the course. We have one of our competitors that does that. The next one that's been coming up in the last couple of years often is what they call a capstone project. It's got the word project, but all you really do is look at a research paper, a bunch of notes, and write another paper on it. Like what would you do to turn around this program, or how, what would you recommend in a method to work this problem? And they use that for if you finish that research paper, you get certified. It's somewhat like a mini thesis on the topic. And then probably the common one used for all the top providers is the last one. You have to actually use the skills taught in the class to solve a problem. So you can learn it, take a test, that's great, but until you apply it, most of us don't count it certified. And that's where we sit at Smarter Solutions, because if you, you can take a test, do fine, but if you can't apply it, we don't consider that certifiable. So that's where we are. This comes to our next survey question. This is one I, some of these we ask for marketing reasons, but this one is really just a question of where you are and what you would like. If you were taking an online class, how much interaction, how would you judge the interaction with an instructor? From extremely beneficial that it doesn't really matter to me. We, we think about these things about how to design our courses and what the differentiators are, but actually all of these choices are available and they all may be successful, but what is it for you? How are we doing, Alon? We're getting a lot of them signed in. We do. We'll keep it open for about five more seconds here. Allow everyone a chance right. to participate. Again, the bottom two aren't being chosen. We got a good group here. And we'll go ahead and close and share right. those results. You should see it time. now. Very beneficial, and it's nice to have if I need it. Those are the winners. And I guess at some level, it is a great thing, but many of us have support group around us that we can ask. That's probably what the middle group means. If I've got other Lean Six Sigma people around, I'll ask them first, but it's also nice to go back to an instructor level person to talk. But everybody thinks it matters, which is good. Thank you for that. Go back to our thing. We're going to talk a little bit how Smarter Solutions has gotten to where we are today, because it sort of patterns the history of e-learning that you'll find out there. You can almost look where companies are, what versions are using. Before I joined Smarter Solutions, we had licensed a laser disc. If you even know what those are, you'd have to be about my age. And then a CDs with training material that you'd either, it was like, they look like records. You put them in and watch it on a TV and it was basically you bought a copy of the course on a hard device like a disc. All right. Didn't sell well, but they were around. The next came to online training. You could, some companies had put together basic training online that you licensed it somebody else's material. And we did that in the 2000s also. That was before me. Number three was after I joined the company. We were still looking for it, a way that you can teach students adequately without having them in a classroom. All of our research led to these online courses where it's live. So we did a live online Greenbelt course, um, about eight people. It had a lower certification rate than any of our classes we'd had to date. And we decided that it wasn't good enough, so that got dropped. 
But each of these, we found that the students weren't getting everything they needed. So we kept looking. About two years ago, we teamed up after a market survey with moresteam.com to find a place that gave a vehicle to do online training that we believed could be successful. More Steam was very established in industry. We've got a slide coming out about them. But we chose to build our course using their system and a lot of their tools and training aids that they had. But it means we they, they host our course, I guess is how it would be called. We found that they were the best out there. Both our customers and clients spoke well of them. But also with our test, when we tested them out and demoed them and met the staff, the ownership, they really did have a good program would be supported for years. We blended with their system with our reference books, which are seen by the Indiana Quality Council and ASQ, American Society of Quality, as some of the top references to the Lean Six Sigma body of knowledge. We built that into our course. And we also listened to the one about instructor-led. We created a course for our clients that would mostly be classroom-based but couldn't find somebody that had, they couldn't make it to class. They're in Edmonton, Alberta, or they live in an island somewhere. They, you can't get them to travel back for a week. So we wanted to create a course that these people would have the same level of training in the classroom folks. So we had to have one that you could take by yourself at your own pace. So here's about more steam. Been around since 2000, so another mature firm train hundreds of thousands of professionals over the year. They say their courses come in multiple languages, work with a number of universities and businesses to generate their stuff. They really are one of the thought leaders out there. What we added to their stuff was a true roadmap. Most of their courses are very generic. They have some genre specific such, which we also get involved in. But they were on the lighter side on some of the tools. They wanted to make it for everybody. We instead put our roadmap in there, which is a very complex and complete. We added the references to the book. So really the book now integrates with the class. So when you're done and the material goes away, and I think it goes away at 12 months after start, like they all do, you've learned out of a book that you can use from then on. You're really not left alone. We actually added an awful lot of individualized coaching. We chose to have each student have a assigned coach that both talked with them and emailed with them so they could build a relationship so they wouldn't just help them on their classroom, they'd help them on their project also with a lot of guidance and support. We do primarily lean on Minitab for our training uh, rather than some of the other ones. That's just what we feel is robust. More Steam gave us the learning management system that manages the student, lets us keep track of test scores, how they're progressing last time they touched it, they had a good policies for multimedia, and then the classes are a mixture of reading, videos, simulations, side reading, links to websites. There's lots of different modalities to learn with. Um, but they're very detailed and nice, and we liked all that. What do you need for an online course? For ours, you don't need any pre-knowledge of Lean Six Sigma. You really just need to have a PC with internet access and Minitab in it. All the rest of the stuff is listed there. Now you can take the class, but you still need to run a DMAIC project or an improvement project for certification, just like a classroom student would do. The hardest one's probably the bottom one. You must have a drive or a wish to learn. These classes are still taught out of your discretionary time. And if you have trouble blocking off time to do something like this, those are the stu that causes the trouble that our students have found sometimes. The business will or your organization won't give you time to learn during your own time, and you end up doing it in your personal time, and it becomes disruptive. The one thing we stress before people buy into it is that you know treat it like a meeting, schedule your time every week to get it done. With that and these tools, you can be successful. And again, as we said, please type in questions if you have them. Um, all right, next one, how much? Biggest question out there. Now, some of us, it's paid by our employer. Some of it's paid by you out of your own account. But these are our two primary courses, the black and the green belt. See how many hours we estimate. Now, it's less if you're a quick reader and don't go to follow all the links. It can be longer if you like to go back over it. 
Uh, we have required live coaching sessions. You get 12 months of information, you can see the prices. A little over 6,000 for a black belt, a little under 4,000 for a green belt. This includes all your books, all the coaching, and certification. Is that all? Is somebody in there, Elon? Did I forget something? I think that's it. That's what it covers, yeah, and, yeah. and your plaque. Oh, and if you certify, you're right. You get a really nice plaque recognizing your certification if you want. You can actually get a certificate to use for continuing education credits such as that. Thank you. I would have forgot that stuff. We also teach other stuff, a couple other classes. The two on the bottom there are interesting that we also have clients that have their own master black belts or good black belts. Some people choose just to take the training and have the books but not be coached. Price is a good bit less. Our prices are high because we're putting people like me or long-term master black belts that spend hours with each student making sure they finish up. So there is an option to do this uncoached if you have a support group around you. Okay, and we have a couple of questions here oh, please. about certification. All right. um, is the certification recognized by ASQ in their, in their process? So I'll let you answer that. All right. Certifications, ASQ, that's a... I don't know how to answer that one. ASQ is a company that makes money on certifying people. That's really all they do. They don't really recognize certifications for anything other than grant them. Um, ASQ is one of the good certifications. They, most people in the business recognize who certified you and you will get asked generally. And those that know, know the good ones and the bad ones. Uh, the long-term providers, there's five or six consultancies in the United States that are well-known, do a good job. A number of companies do a good job. Like my, for, my master black belt was from Bechtel, seen as a good choice. Even here at Smarter Solutions, when I joined, they wanted to see this, who certified me for all of my certifications. Uh, and saw that Motorola did my first one, which they said, okay, they're good. So. ASQ doesn't really recognize anybody, they just certify people. The ones that would be recognized are the employers that would want you to work with them. And most of them just look up who is your certifying authority. There is not a central authority like you might get for project management uh, that everybody uses. Certifications, I mean honestly, you could certify yourself by going to the store and buying a certificate. There really isn't any rules on what it takes. You can, like I said, you can certify someone at the end of their class without ever using it. So I don't. I probably just talked around that and never answered it. Was there another question? There is another question, and it's in regards to master black belt. All right. So uh, you listed about five courses that we offer online. What about a master black belt offering? That's it. We struggled with that. Do we want a master black belt online? As far as I know, there is not one available anywhere. There are a couple people that have a mix of online and classroom for a master black belt, but there is actually not a lot of master black belt classes at all available. Most master black belts are certified internal in an organization to be an instructor so they can manage their program themselves. But our Master Black Belt course, which I think we're teaching next week, is another start of one. Correct. Um, is more of a business course than it is a skills course. And what I've read about e-learning is electronic or self-paced learning is wonderful to learn skills. But they haven't been as successful in business schools and MBAs because those are interactive classes that part of the knowledge of the business side is hard to do with e-learning. I think that's why we haven't found a way to go do it yet. So our Master Black Belt class is still taught in a classroom session. Great. And thanks for laying out the benefits yeah. for that. Now here's our certification slide to sort of go with the first question there. Here's what we require for every one of our certifications, which I would tell you a company that does not do all of these is probably not giving you a great certification. Um, complete a course complete the coaching, complete a project. Now, part of our course is taking exams to make sure you're getting the knowledge. Some people have a certification exam and a project. 
Uh, we do one with every training rather than one at the end for the test. Uh, ASQ, which the question answered, they can provide certification without the training. They require you to fill out an affidavit or a list saying that I have completed two projects that did this. That's how they meet the project requirement. Then you just take a skills exam, a multiple choice test. If you can pass that, you will um, get certified. And we give a plaque, though. I don't know if, how else does. Here's our next question. You've just heard me talk about e-learning. Is it what you expected, or is what we're talking about for e-learning in the Six Sigma world more or less than you expected to see? If you could answer that one. I'm trying to get to what your expectation was for e-learning before you arrived here. So did, in this webinar, was it more or less now we're getting people in? As expected is good. That means that we hit the expectations. Um, so I'm not really asking about the webinar, more just e-learning in general is it what you expected. Because e-learning in the Lean Six Sigma world is different from a safety presentation or how to take your dishwasher apart that you might get on YouTube. So if you would close that and post it along. Okay, and we'll share those results. And, and again, um, if you do have comments or questions, feel free to type those in. And what, Elon, Elon, what you don't know is in the exit survey, there's a blank to ask another question if you want. So, or two, I guess. Uh, you'll see that this is about what people expected for Lean Six Sigma training. And that's wonderful. Uh, a little bit more, a little bit less. It's like a little bell curve there. It looks out real nice. Thank you for that. We ready to move on? All right. I, I still want to talk about classroom training. We teach classroom training. We always will. And I get... I guess the biggest question I ended up answering as an instructor is what's right for me? And I tell people that there isn't a right answer for everyone. The, the real question on e-learning is can you learn watching a computer? Uh, e the interactive ones we do, you still have to use mini tab, you have to work exercises, you have to click on stuff, answer questions. But at the same time, can you block out time to sit down by yourself and take your lessons. And if you can do that, e-learning could be for you. But if you find you are not a good time management person and you put everything else to the end, it may not be a good choice for you. So it's really more about you than it is the e-learning or not. So I, we have people all the time that say, I can't do it. And I think we have a couple we offer. If you take our e-learning and find it's not working for you, you can transfer to our classroom sessions. We make a, there might be a little adjustment in price. I don't know exactly how it's done, but we have had people convert uh, because some people find they just can't do it. Some people just want to talk to someone, and they, they verify their learning by paraphrasing the topic and getting an answer right back, which is hard to do e-learning. So again, a lot of it's about you. Now, I personally love classroom training. I'm an e-learning guy, but I like classroom training. But that's You're me. a classroom instructor, Rick. <laughs> I know. And, and I guess that leads me to a wrap-up. There's no slide on. We are a Six Sigma, Lean Six Sigma company. You can imagine we take data on everything. You saw my little map of where everybody comes from. And our, after our first 12 months of e-learning with the stuff we do now, we did a survey on <clears throat> certification rates, knowledge levels, uh, like a voice of the customer doing your projects, not really quizzing them, but talking with them. We found that the people in our e-learning class were generally, I guess I'll even say significantly, higher knowledge retention than the ones in the classroom session. So we dug into it, found the advantage that they were finding as if they were halfway through their project and there's a mention of a value stream map and they go, I didn't know I could use it for that. They could go back and rewatch the value stream map lesson and go, oh, now I understand what that means. But in a classroom session, you can't. After it's said, it's gone. You have your classroom notes in a book. So we figure the real difference we've had in our students has been the ability to go back and relearn sessions they didn't really catch it the first time. Part of it is they learned something in their project to go back to look at it. But we are getting, like I said, better retention out of our online, but they're all doing well for certification and making accomplishments. That really is all I have prepared. Um, 
So we've talked about the digital age, a bunch of options that are out there, what works for you, and what we provide. Um, time for more questions, but I, I still, if you're considering e-learning, especially for the folks that would like a training that came out of the United States and don't live here, it's one of the few options you have. We're very close to having a completely electronic course with everything downloaded, which makes it easier. It's almost there. Are there any questions, Elon? Great. And Rick, I did want to point out one thing. Um, you know, having gone through an e-learning course myself through Smarter Solutions, uh, the way that my course was formatted was I sat in a, a classroom setting with others as we participated in the e-learning course. And, and so that was very beneficial. To That's have. right. You got three folks together that went through the lessons together and talked about it. We, we haven't ever, we did, if people did that, we didn't know it. Um, but as you guys, I mean, I was other than our folks, but that worked out really well. And it gave some of the interaction that you get from having a group to talk about it, which was nice. And that's part of the reason we've created these e-learning courses yeah. is that they can be offered as a, a team uh, on-site training. So. But I would say we want everybody to pay that's doing it. Correct. Correct. Everybody right. gets their own individual access so they can go home and, and study at the same time. Uh, we do have to make money so we can keep <laughs> providing webinars. What else do we have here, Alon? Great. We have a couple of questions here. How far from completion is the uh, downloadable course uh, and also the cost for that? Um, we don't have a downloadable course. You mean the downloadable book? We have the book complete. We just have always sold it until right now. I think I convinced Forrest two days ago that we can start giving out the book with e-learning students. You will still get a hard copy of the book that you pay for. It's part of the course, but we will give you a, a Kindle copy that you can download and have forever. Uh, it's ready today. It's the books that are not ready are are one we use for master black belt training and one sort of marketing level book. But the main course for DMAIC projects has been done for how long? A couple months, along? Correct. Yeah, and it's available on Amazon today. Okay, hey, another question we have here, how long do I have to complete the course? Our general rule through the learning management system is 12 months after sign up. Most people get through the course in about the same, I'm speaking of all courses are 12 months, I think, except for, there's one that's six months, but it's a very short one that we offer. But the black and the green belt are 12 months. Uh, if you're really close, we can work a short extension, but we don't like to. Uh, most people are done with the course in about the same four months it would take a regular classroom student, but they have it to go back and forth to as they run their project. Okay, great. Rick, Any more? Um, there are some other questions. Um, this counts for Minitab. You mentioned that Minitab is used in our black belt and our green belt course. Are there any discounts that we offer for that? Minitab is used in about 60% of the United States Lean Six Sigma programs. Used to be more, but is there softening and taking away some of the rigor? Um, we really don't, I don't think we offer a discount, do we, Elon? But we offer, you we, can buy it with the course? You can buy it with the course, and uh, we do get a, a different pricing than if you were to go directly to okay. Minitab. So uh, we, we do offer a slight discount from uh, directly purchasing from Minitab. And there is options, depending on if your company is going into it, you can get a server license that you share with lots of people, which can be a way more effective and cost-effective option. Uh, and you can also find it sometimes buying copies on, second, on the second market. Um, we teach it. We're good through, I think, version 15. In some cases, version 14 works with all of our courses, so you don't have to have the most recent one to get by. Okay, thanks Rick. Uh, another question here, do we offer on-site green belt training? Well, of course, uh, we still offer uh, public courses that you fly to Austin to take all of our courses. Uh, our preference is if you can fly and do it on-site. Like we said, reason many people don't want to travel and be away from work, this allows you to take the course and be at work. 
Uh, I've done a bunch of them this year at different sites in and out of the U.S., teaching black and green belt and master black belt uh, at a vendor's location. Great. We've got a great question here, Rick, especially considering the map that you showed at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, and and I'll, I'll explain a little bit before I present the question to you. Uh, our on-site courses or our public classes where there's an instructor leading it, there's two weeks for green belt separated by a month, there's four weeks for black belt separated by four months, and two weeks for master black belt separated by a month. This question uh, says that we see that you separate uh, the training in blocks, particularly speaking to the master black belt. Is it possible to follow that in one block, uh, considering travel costs? We've talked about it. Uh, if I go through all of them, the master black belt could be done back to back. Uh, you miss an opportunity. Between weeks, we've got a targeted homework to go back and do certain things on your business data. We'd probably just have to do that uh, remote, go through that later. We have done a green belt class back to back, which is two weeks. Uh, the difficulty you get there is some of the learning, if you, you're, our intent is you're running a project while you take the class, which means you teach and then you do some of it, then you come back and talk about it. Teaching it back to back in those two week courses, you miss the ability to go back to work, try something and have questions, but no, they work. Uh, the, we have never tried the black belt course that way, though. Okay. And I know we, we were offering a master black belt option like that. Uh, in Singapore, this, this uh, participant is looking for one in Europe, uh, so we can definitely talk about that option for master black belt. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have done master black belts in Europe. The one last one I worked on was actually they separated it by two weeks. Great. Thanks, Rick. And, um, our, our books are available on Amazon. Um, they're also available at smartersolutions.com. Uh, there's different uh, discounts that you can always buy from Amazon with used books. Um, if you buy it directly from us, you're buying a new book for sure. Uh, so that's, that's to answer one question as well. Uh, any other questions, feel free to type them in. And I've got one more here right. uh, I'll go ahead and share with you. Uh, just asking about the slide deck. Rick, you took all your time to put this together. Thanks for sharing with us. Uh, are we going to make these slides available? I have no problem with it. Great. Uh, so write to us if you want a copy or put it in the comments after the survey uh, if you want it. Uh, we probably just won't send it out to everybody. If you want it, when you take the exit survey, there's one question. It's open-ended. If you have any, it's something like, if you have any questions that weren't answered, weren't answered, please type it in. Just put, I would like a copy of the um, slide deck, and we'll get you a PDF copy of it. All right. Um, well, I think that's all we've got today. Uh, if you have any questions, like Rick said, feel free to add those to the survey. Again, thanks for joining us today for Learning Lean Six Sigma online in the digital age. And I did forget one thing, even though you wrapped it up. If you notice on the lower right-hand corner, we participate in the digital age here at Smart Solution with a lot of LinkedIn activity. Please join with me if you want or Forrest. We do Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and just blogging. There are two nice blogs on our website, one about business side and one about practitioner side which is my blog about different questions that belts face and how we answer them. So there are other digital access points you can reach out to us. All right? Thanks again, everybody.